What's up my friend? Abby here and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. It's Preptober in case you haven't noticed. I've noticed. We have less than one month to prepare for NaNoWriMo. What? For those of you who just showed up on the writing scene and on my channel, Welcome to the madness. <laughs> NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month and it's an annual challenge that happens every November, daring writers all over the world to write an entire novel or at least 50,000 words in 30 days. But you probably already knew that. In fact, you're probably thinking about taking on this crazy challenge. It's a great idea, especially if you wanna become a better and more disciplined writer. I've done NaNoWriMo for the past four years now and it has helped me to become the writer I am today. In fact, my second NaNo that I ever did was when I wrote this widow gem. <laughs> but I don't wanna talk about me, I wanna talk about you. More specifically, how you cannot possibly consider doing NaNoWriMo without Scrivener. That would be crazy. Seriously, I'm not getting paid to say this. I would be lost without Scrivener. <laughs> when I made the switch over from writing in Microsoft Word to writing in Scrivener, I was amazed. It was like going from writing in a tiny dark office filled with clutter to writing in a beautiful, bright, organized office with everything you need at your fingertips. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I organize that virtual office for novel writing success. Plus, I'm going to share three of my favorite Scrivener tools that not a lot of writers know about. And then I'm going to offer you something really special that I've spent the last week putting together. Ready? Let's go. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. So if you're anything like me, you have tons of notes about your story. Outlines, plots, scene cards, character profiles, research notes, pieces of dialogue that you want to use later. But how do you put it all together in one place and organize it in a coherent way so that you always have exactly what you need at your fingertips? One word. Scrivener. I am so serious when I say that Microsoft Word feels like a tiny cluttered desk in comparison. Now I'm not dragging Word. Word is great for formatting because that's kind of what it was designed to be. It's a word processing software. It's not a writing software designed with scatterbrained artistic writers in mind. I love Scrivener because it is all about organization and aesthetic. My two favorite words. You can put an infinite amount of stuff into your Scrivener project and organize it to perfection. And you can also customize it with different themes and appearances to set the mood for your writing project. It also does an amazing job of backing up your files automatically so that you never have to worry about losing your writing. Every writer's worst nightmare, am I right? I could go on and on, but I wanna show you how I set up my Scrivener for novel writing success. So let's jump into my computer and have a look. Okay, so this is my very essential Scrivener writing setup. And I actually made this into a Scrivener template that I'm gonna tell you how to download at the end of this video. So stick around for that. But first, let's just go through a little quick tour of how I set up my Scrivener for novel writing success. First, I have a pre-write task list. And that is basically just a task list that I keep for myself outside of all the folders that tells me what I still need to research, what I still need to outline, sort, and any other questions that I might have to answer before I get into the writing process. In my manuscript folder, this is my draft. And I have three subfolders here that are for Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And as you know, I have a whole series on the three act story structure. I use the three act story structure all the time. Here I have act one, and this is just a sample book, okay? I'm not gonna take credit for it. It's Pride and Prejudice. I made this example project to show you what my template looks like at work. The next folder, which is arguably the most important folder for me, is my outlines. So I have a few different stages of outlining my novels, and if you have followed me for a while, you know that I 
really love the outlining process. I take a lot of time to outline my novels. So my first step to outlining is brain dumping, just dumping all of my ideas into one document. When I start thinking about a story and brainstorming it, and I know that this is going to become a book, I immediately start a writing project, a Scrivener project, and I start dumping my ideas in this document. The next step of this process is, of course, the three-act story structure. I usually start with a bullet point structure that looks something like this, so I have all of the three-act story beats listed out like a bullet point list, and I will just write my very vague, very basic ideas for what's going to happen at certain points in the book, and I'll later come back, make this more, make this uh, really solid, and then I will start filling out the three-act story structure in more detail. Next step is to take my three-act story structure, paste it in this document, and then replace all the story beat headings with one-liner descriptions of each story beat. So then I start filling out more details. I start getting really detailed with my outline, and that creates a long outline. And usually my long outlines are around 15,000 to 20,000 words long. Long. The next document is dedicated to subplots. So I like to outline my subplots in very clear, simple terms so that I can easily wrap my head around what is going on in this subplot and how much time I'm going to spend on the subplot. By the way, I have a whole video on subplots and side characters. I recommend you check out both of those. I'll link them in the corner as well. The next folder I have is scene cards, and I have a whole video on that too. I have videos on like literally every part of this. Um, scene cards are awesome. They help you to outline your story, but in greater detail and to really emphasize to yourself and then to the reader when you write your book, why this scene matters, not just the plot, but the story, what is changing below the surface? Why does this scene matter to the big picture? So if you've never heard of scene cards before, I really, really recommend them. Check out my video, it's linked in the corner or in the description box below this video. Okay, let's keep going down this list. The next folder I have is characters. And this is the fun part where you start outlining your characters and bringing them to life. So I use my ultimate character profile, which I've talked about in previous videos. It's awesome, I use it all the time. It really helps me to create lifelike, riveting, conflicted characters. It's important to outline your character goals and the backstory scenes that make them who they are today. It's also really fun to utilize Scrivener's options for adding photos to your character profiles so that you can go to your corkboard view and see your whole cast of characters in one place. That is just one of the aesthetic parts of Scrivener that I really, really love. My next folder is my templates folder and templates folders are cool because they're special folders. And that means that when you're in any part of your Scrivener project, you can add a document from a template. So I can add a character profile template or a scene card template anywhere in my Scrivener project. Next folder is my settings folder and that's where I will make sketches of all of my locations that I'm going to be writing about. I also really like to add image cards here as well because it just makes the locations come to life and gives you some extra inspiration for writing those locations. Next I have a research folder which is where I will put all of the research I need to do if there's specific things about a time period or a location or one of my character's jobs, I will put all of that in this folder just to keep track of technical things and also to remind myself to go back and research other things later that maybe I didn't have time to research before I started writing. And finally, the last folder here is a notes folder. I like to keep all of my notes in one folder called notes so that I don't lose any of them. And I like to categorize them by what the notes are about. I make a lot of notes about styles. What style am I gonna write the book in? How is it going to be different from my other books? What are some recurring elements I'd like to include? Next. I have a note document about themes. So I ask myself, what are the themes in this story? What is the truth I wanna scream from the rooftops? You know how excited I get about themes. So this is an important document for me. Next is random notes. That's just like all of the random stuff that I don't know where to put. I will put it here and then I'll always know. It's in the random notes section if I don't know where it is. Next, I have a document for rating. So this is just something that I like to make for myself for my own reference and then later as sort of a content guide when I publish said book, 
But during the writing process, I like to write down what sort of content I'm putting in this book so that I can look at it objectively and decide from that standpoint what content I want to leave in, what content I want to take out or modify. Then I have a document for soundtracks, which is just something fun that I like to do. I like to list out music that reminds me of particular scenes in the book and what those songs are and what scenes they go to. And finally, I have a document for my blurb. And I like to write the blurb before I write the book or at least a, a rough version of the blurb so that when I'm writing the book, I have this really simplified blueprint of where I'm taking this story. What is the main point? What is the big idea? And I like to just have that as a compass sort of to keep me on the right path with this story. So that's my very minimal, very basic, very essential ultimate Scrivener setup for writing success during NaNoWriMo or any other writing project. Okay, have I convinced you yet? Do you think Scrivener is definitely something that you wanna check out? If so, use the link below this video and you can get a 20% discount off of Scrivener when you use the code ABBY at the checkout, okay? So type in the word A-B-B-I-E for the promo code and you'll get 20% off Scrivener. You're welcome. <laughs> now, let me show you my top three favorite secret weapons inside Scrivener. I call them secret weapons because most people don't know about them. Most people, when I tell them about these tools, they're like, I didn't know you could do that. You can do that. First awesome secret weapon is session targets. Session targets are perfect for NaNoWriMo because you're trying to hit a specific word count goal. Obviously, let's say your word count goal is 2000 words per day. You can go up to project and then show project targets. And then you'll see a little dialog box like this, where you can enter in your word count goal for your project, as well as the goal for the day. So let's put 50,000 for the project target and 2,000 for today's session target. And from here, we can even click on options and go deeper. So you can choose different settings for your draft target. And you can also customize your session target. You can set up things like schedules so that Scrivener knows what days you're writing and Scrivener can even calculate how many words you need to write every day to meet your deadline on time. And then when you go back to your project to write, you will have this cool progress bar showing you how many words you've written today, how much you have reached of your goal and how much you still have to write. Next awesome feature that I love and use all the time is Scrivener themes. Themes are a super easy way to change up your writing space with a different appearance. Remember when I said that Scrivener is fully customizable? I meant that absolutely literally. You can go into Scrivener, preferences, and under the appearance tab, you can change literally any of the colors, background images, and fonts you see across Scrivener. It's awesome. Like, I don't know how I lived so long with a writing software that didn't do this. You can custom design as many themes as you like and save them to your theme menu so that you can easily switch between appearances and change the whole mood of your writing space. These are some of the themes that I've custom built to suit different genres. So this one is perfect for romance, this one is super gothic and fantasy. This one is very cyberpunk dystopian vibes. And I actually designed these themes special for you guys. So that's just part of the exciting thing that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. So stick around to the end of this video and I will show you how to get my pack of custom made Scrivener themes. But first I wanna show you one more awesome secret weapon that not a lot of writers take advantage of in Scrivener and that is snapshots. Snapshots are especially handy in the editing process but I've used this tool quite a bit in the first drafting process too. So here's how it works, you're writing, okay? Let's Let's say your characters start talking about something that you're not sure if this is the direction that you want the conversation to go. But you've already written so much of this dialogue and it's good. Maybe you should keep it? Don't worry, snapshot it. Pop open your inspector panel, click the little camera icon, and then hit the plus sign. Bam. You now have a snapshot of your document exactly as it is at this moment in time. That snapshot will be saved forever in your Scrivener project, so you don't have to worry about creating a separate folder for deleted scenes. You can make as many changes as you like in the real document and always go back to reference that first version in the snapshot. I use this feature all the time when I'm editing different drafts of my book. So after my first drafting process, when I go through to do my first round of edits, I'll go through each chapter and snapshot 
all of them exactly as they are so that if I change something significant for the second draft, I can always look back at what I originally had in the first draft. So those are just a few of my favorite features in Scrivener and it was literally so hard to pick just three because there's so much more I want to share with you, which is why I made something a little bit more than a video this time. I made a masterclass because I know what you're thinking right now. Abby, that looks very complicated. I'm a writer, not a programmer. I know. And if you're embarking on NaNoWriMo, you have enough on your plate right now, which is why I am here to hold your hand and show you how to set up your Scrivener for novel writing success. Yes, there are other Scrivener tutorials out there. In fact, Scrivener itself comes with a super detailed interactive tutorial, which takes like all day to get through. And when I first got Scrivener, I did that because I'm a nerd. <laughs> but you don't need to know all that. It will probably overwhelm you, especially if you're new to Scrivener. All you really need to know are some very basic things, plus some really awesome tools that not a lot of writers utilize. Basically the important stuff, the stuff that I use all the time to write stories that matter. So if you want to cut through all the clutter and learn the valuable stuff fast, that's what this masterclass is for. I'm going to take you through the whole setup process, start to finish, and show you how to organize your Scrivener just like I have. Don't worry, Scrivener is just as easy, if not easier, to navigate than Microsoft Word. And I'm gonna show you how to get up and running fast. The Scrivener Masterclass is short, to the point, and easy to follow. It is broken into five parts. One, the basics. So starting Scrivener for the first time, plus a quick orientation tour. Two, setting up your story project. I'll show you how to build out your folders from scratch or load in my Scrivener template, which comes with the Masterclass, by by the way. Three, customizing your writing space, so how to change themes and also the best places to keep your notes for easy access. Four, backups and exports, getting your writing out of Scrivener and setting up backups so that you can sleep at night. And five, my favorite features because there are way more awesome secret weapons that will make your writing process fast, smooth, and fun. Plus, you can get my pack of seven gorgeous Scrivener themes. Four are dark mode, three are light mode. They are all inspired by different genres. The masterclass will show you how to import them into your Scrivener and make them your own. So if you want in on this masterclass, click Click the link below this video. I'll be teaching the masterclass on my Mac computer, but if the screen happens to look different on a Windows version of Scrivener, I will show you what the Windows version looks like so that everybody can follow along. Oh, and the masterclass is also lifetime access. So you can pause, go back, skip forward, rewatch lessons, and learn at your own pace. So click the link below and get yourself inside the masterclass. And remember, if you're buying Scrivener for the first time, use the code ABBY at the checkout, A-B-B-I-E, and you will get 20% off of your Scrivener purchase. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. If you wanna get the most out of your Scrivener experience, click the link below and I will see you on the inside of the masterclass. Rock on. Shh.